the hardest story I've ever done physically because of the altitude and the steepness of the mountains. Visually, it looks like you're on the moon. The cat's very shy and elusive. They can see for very long distances. We are constantly scanning with binoculars to try to see them, and I would be of the opinion that they're looking to see us. I myself brought 33 bags with me of equipment, sleeping bags, warm clothes, I mean, you think of what you need. So, you know, we flew from Delhi and then Delhi up to Leh, the capital of Ladakh. This is where we're gonna start our uh, snow leopard expedition. We'll be here a few days to acclimate to the altitudes at 12,000 feet. And then got the bags into where the road ends by uh, truck and Jeep. And then we had to load everything on horseback and walk in. We took in 14 remote cameras and a whole camp. Tents, sleeping bags, cots, pads. We bought food from the US and then we bought some in India. At night it was 30 below zero and I've spent my whole career working in jungles. So this was a real switch for me. We looked for locations with the help of the local people that worked with the Snow Leopard NGOs. They had already ID'd locations where the cat comes to mark. This is a new uh, track for Snow Leopards. It looks, you know, the, this is female one. This is uh, last uh, two days, you know, very fresh step and tracks. You can see someone, you know, uh, uh, spraying here. With this knowledge, we were able to find locations to set up cameras where we knew that cats would come to visit. Once we knew we were having success in like a specific trail, then I would, I quote, mine that trail with remote cameras. Okay, let's put the caps on, get the rope up, we're done. It's very interesting for people to realize that no matter where you're working with animals, if there's a trail in the jungle, that's where the cats will walk. They may not hunt on that trail because they're gonna hunt wherever they need to go where the scent is for the prey, but they will walk on these trails and you will see areas that they'll mark. The first image is a curious cat. Behind him is the trail. He's looking up to see what the flash is. And it's just flashing him in the face. It flashed twice, he turned around and he walked away. The next image is on a high ridge. This is a cat at a marking spot where they spray to really give their scent to that location. They mark to tell other snow leopards, this is my area, not yours. Uh, the next image is uh, very important to me, and it took five and a half months to get one picture, but I love this image with the mountains in the background and had the closeness of the animal. It's very intimate to me. I feel like I can just reach out and, and stroke his fur, though he'd bite me, I'm sure. <laughs> This is where the snow leopard lives. He does not roam the open areas, except for following prey. He will sit in the rocks so he's camouflaged. And one of the reasons the snow leopard has such a long tail, which is the longest tail of any cat in the world, is that when he's on those rocky areas, 
and the blue sheep come in to feed on the small plants that are in the rocks, he will chase them in almost vertical rock faces, and he uses the tail for balance. We look at the snow leopard as being endangered. In 2005, the Dalai Lama organized a campaign to help save Himalayan species to grow a greater respect towards the environment and all forms of life on Earth. And so he's essentially saving the snow leopard.